Whenever the bite gets tough, downsizing and fishing finesse can be one of the most effective ways to get a bite and can make the difference in you getting skunk for that day or catching bass. Many anglers do not like throwing finesse techniques because it means that they have to slow down to effectively target bass. However, finesse fishing can be one of the most effective ways to catch bass, especially whenever the conditions are not in your favor or you're fishing a heavy pressured body of water. There's many different types of finesse techniques out there and in today's video, I will tell you my five favorite finesse techniques to use all year long. These five finesse techniques work well all year long and throughout the whole entire country. Personally, finesse fishing is one of my favorite ways to target bass and I have caught countless big fish utilizing finesse techniques. If you enjoy this video or if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, it really does help the channel out a lot but anyways sit back relax and let's get into the video the first finesse technique i'm going to talk about today is the ned rig the ned rig is normally my go-to finesse technique 90 percent of the time and i have a lot of confidence throwing the ned rig when the bite gets tough i have caught countless big bass using the ned rig and my pb smallmouth bass was actually caught on the ned rig during the winter time the ned rig can resemble a lot of different types of forages depending on what type of soft plastic you use the small profile of a Ned rig does it especially well whenever imitating smaller bait fish and the bass just cannot resist it. The Ned rig is also very versatile whenever it comes down to rigging it. You can rig the Ned rig the normal way with an exposed hook. You can also Texas rig it or you can fish the Ned rig with weed guards if you're fishing around a lot of timber or grass. The Ned rig is very versatile with how many different situations that you can fish it in and works well in any body of water. Whenever I'm fishing the Ned rig, I will mainly fish it with an exposed hook so I can get the best hookup ratio possible. Whenever it comes down to what soft plastic you should use, I pretty much exclusively use Z-Man, specifically the Z-Man Finesse TRD because of how buoyant it is in the water and how natural it looks to the bass. Some of my favorite other soft plastics to use are the Z-Man TRD Bugs, the Z-Man TRD Craws, and the Z-Man TRD Gobies. There's many different types of soft plastics that you can use, so make sure you find out what works best for you and the situation that you are fishing in. It also really depends on what forage are present in the body of water that you are fishing in. Whenever you are fishing the Ned Rig, there are a few different ways that you can fish it. The retrieves I use whenever I'm fishing the Ned Rig is bouncing it off the bottom, swimming the Ned Rig, and dead sticking it. These retrieves work really well for me and I have caught countless bass utilizing these retrieves. However, it's important for you to experiment with different retrieves so you can get the most bites possible depending on the body of water you are fishing in or the conditions for that day. As you can see, the Ned Rig is very versatile and can be a very important tool for new or even experienced anglers whenever the bite gets tough. The second finesse technique I'm going to talk about today is the Wacky Rig. The Wacky Rig is an effective finesse technique that gets some huge bites. I love throwing the wacky rig and it truly does excel whenever you are fishing it in shallow water. I mainly use the wacky rig whenever I'm targeting largemouth, but I also use it whenever I'm targeting smallmouth and spotted bass. This past year, I went to Gunnersville a few times and I struggled to catch bass using power fishing techniques. After not catching any bass, I had the idea that I should change my approach, so I decided to start fishing the wacky wacky rig to target those hesitant bass. The bass were so used to seeing power fishing techniques day in and day out and as soon as I switched to the wacky rig I started catching bass. I was utilizing the wacky rig to target grass lines and both trips I caught some really nice bass all thanks to the wacky rig. Whenever you are fishing the wacky rig there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. The three things that you want to keep in mind whenever you are fishing the wacky rig is the soft plastic you use the hook you select, and making sure that you utilize O-rings. Whenever I'm fishing the Wacky Rig, I will always use the Gary Yamamoto Cinco or the Yum Dinger. The Gary Yamamoto Cinco sinks a lot quicker compared to the Yum Dinger, which sinks very slowly. There's a time and a place for the Gary Yamamoto Cinco and the Yum Dinger, depending on the mood for the bass for that particular day. Whenever it comes down to selecting a hook, I personally like to use the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger 
in the one aught size. I know what you're thinking, this sounds like a huge hook to use with the wacky rig, but I personally feel like I have a much better hookup ratio, and I feel like the bass do not shy away from the hook whatsoever. I fished the wacky rig with the Gamakatsu B10S stinger hooks in clear water, and I do not have any issues with bass wanting to bite my wacky rig. If you have a bad hookup ratio whenever you are fishing the wacky rig, make sure you try these hooks out, and I promise you will have a much better hookup ratio. It is also very important for you to utilize O-rings whenever you are fishing the wacky rig. There's two main reasons why I think that the O-rings are so important whenever you are fishing the wacky rig. Your worm will stay in the same spot whenever you are fishing it, and you will not go through as many soft plastics whenever you are using O-rings. Let me know in the comment section down below if you utilize O-rings whenever you are fishing the wacky rig. The third finesse technique I'm gonna talk about today is the finesse jig. The finesse jig is a good lure to use, especially whenever the bass are hugging the bottom. Whenever the bass do not want to eat a regular sized jig presentation, I will always reach for the finesse jig. You can get some huge bites on the finesse jig, and I I have caught countless big fish utilizing it. I will mainly fish the finesse jig around rocks, wood, and up under docks, but I will also throw it anywhere where I think the bass will be sitting at for that particular day. The finesse jig is also as effective as a full-size jig presentation, but is a very good way to get hesitant bass to bite. Whenever the water is very clear, the finesse jig can be an effective tool to get the bass to bite whenever they do not want to commit to a full-size jig presentation. Whenever I'm fishing the finesse jig, I will fish it as slow as possible so I can look as natural as I possibly can and so I can get the most bites. You can also add action to your finesse jig by slowly popping it up and letting it fall back down to the bottom or you can slowly sweep your rod to drag the finesse jig slowly across the bottom. Another effective way to fish the finesse jig, especially during the winter time, is by dead sticking it. By dead sticking it, the bass will come up and inspect your finesse jig and they will not be able to resist it, especially with it just sitting there. My favorite finesse jig to use is the Kitek Tungsten Jig Model 2 Version 2 with a Z-Man TRD Bugs trailer. This is a very deadly finesse finesse jig and if you haven't already make sure you try it out and I promise this will become your favorite finesse jig. The finesse jig is one of the best finesse techniques especially whenever you are trying to target bigger bass and is one of the first lures I reach for whenever the bite gets tough. The fourth finesse technique that I'm going to talk about today is the finesse swim bait. The finesse swim bait is an effective way to target bass all year long due to how many different types of forages that it can imitate. Throughout the year bass will feed on a a variety of different types of bait fish and the finesse swim bait is one of the most effective techniques to use whenever the bass are keyed in on bait fish. This is because the finesse swim bait will stand out compared to all the other bait fish and it will look like a very easy meal to the bass. Bass are just not able to resist coming up and hitting the finesse swim bait. I was on Lake Chickamauga this past fall fishing the finesse swim bait, throwing it up under docks, and I was able to catch my limit very quickly. The finesse swim bait is one of the first techniques that I reach for whenever I go to a new body of water, and it has helped me countless times to catch my limit. You might be asking yourself, what exactly is a finesse swim bait? I personally consider a finesse swim bait, a smaller size paddle tail presentation on a light jig head. My favorite paddle tail to use whenever I'm fishing a finesse swim bait is the Kitek Swing Impact Fat in the 2.8 inch or 3.3 inch. You can fish a even smaller paddle tail, but most of the time this is what I like to use. But it really does depend on the size of the bait fish that are present in the body of water that you are fishing in. My favorite style jig head to use whenever I'm fishing a finesse jig is the Kitek Super Round Tungsten Jig Head. I prefer to use a tungsten jig head just so I can feel more bites compared to if I was using a lead style jig head. Whenever it comes down to what jig head weight that you should use, I personally like to use anywhere from an eighth to a quarter most of the time. You can use a heavier style jig head whenever the bass are relating to deeper water, 
but personally I like to go as light as possible so I can look as realistic as I can to the bass. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have confidence throwing a finesse swim bait to catch bass throughout the whole entire year. The fifth finesse technique that I'm going to talk about today is the drop shot. Whenever the bite gets tough, one of the first lures that I will reach for is the drop shot. There's something about fishing a drop shot that the bass just cannot resist. The drop shot is one of the most effective finesse techniques, especially whenever they're not wanting to commit to a moving bait. The drop shot is one of the most versatile finesse techniques and shines in many different types of situations. The three most important things to consider whenever you're fishing a drop shot is the hook that you use, the soft plastic that you select, and the weight that you choose. Whenever it comes down to what hook that you're going to select and how you're going to rig it, it is important to consider what type of cover that you will be fishing around. If you are going to be fishing around a lot of wood cover, for example, you might want to consider Texas rigging your drop shot so you don't think that you have the next 10 pounder on the end of your line. Most of the time, I personally like to nose hook mine with a smaller wire hook so I can get the most action out of the all plastic as possible whenever I'm fishing a drop shot. Whenever it comes down to selecting what saw plastic to use, it is important to consider what type of forage are present in the body of water that you are fishing in, and this can really change depending on where you're located at in the country. However, most of the time, I personally like to imitate blueback herring, shad, or bluegill depending on what the bass are feeding on for that particular day. Also, it is important to consider what type of weight that you select whenever you are fishing the drop shot. You want to use as light of a weight as you can possibly get away with because this will make your drop shot look a lot more realistic in the water column. If the bass are relating to deeper water or in heavy current, you might want to use a heavier weight so you can maintain bottom contact as much as possible and this will result in you getting more bites whenever you're out on the water. After taking these tips into account, you'll become so much more efficient fishing the drop shot. The drop shot shines in many different types of situations and is one of the best ways to catch big bass throughout the whole entire country. These are the top five finesse techniques that I will always have ready to throw whenever the bite gets tough. These finesse techniques I have a lot of confidence in and by using these, you will improve the quantity and the quality of the bass you catch, especially whenever the bass do not want to commit to any other presentation. Let me know if this video helped you in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you include what the biggest bass that you've caught whenever you were finesse fishing in the comment section down below too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button to help this video in the YouTube algorithm so more people can get recommended this video. If you are new to the channel and you made it this far in the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you do not miss out on future uploads. Also, if you feel like supporting the channel even more, make sure you check out my channel membership. This will go directly into improving the channel and will make sure that I can provide the best quality content for y'all. If you want to check out another proven fish catcher whenever the bite gets tough, make sure you check out this video right here talking about the net rig. <laughs>